Welcome back to Anvil Quested, ladies and gentlemen. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress 2014. And our memorial slab for the Cyclops has been completed. Would you like to look at it? Let's see here. It's very basic, of course. I wish I knew what his name was in English. It doesn't ever tell me. It just says his name and his title. Seshed Atalaral Mater Isak. And it says in memory of him, he went missing in the year 160. He did not go missing. The dwarves know perfectly well what happened to him. And he was the slayer of the kobold Tankus and a devoted father. Now we haven't seen many kobolds at Anvil Quested. They haven't made it around. But what else can I show you? Oh yes. Oh yes. We now have Saram Kogan, the Great Boat, a silver bracelet. This is a silver bracelet. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular chert cabochons and encircled with bands of silver and cave spider silk. This obelisk, or obelisk, what? This object is adorned with hanging rings of chert and menaces with spikes of chert. On the item is an image of two gizzard stones, an indigo tourmaline. On the item is an image of Dakost Fierce Mirrored, the dwarf, and dwarves in shirt. Dakost Fierce Mirrored is surrounded by the dwarves. This artwork relates the ascension of the dwarf to the position of Queen of the Ageless Manor in 29. On the item is an image of goblins and dwarves in indigo tourmaline. The goblins are refusing the dwarves. The artwork relates to the defeat of the autonomous towers by the Ageless or of the Ageless Manor and takeover of Sensed Paddle by the Bridled Evils in the late spring of 150 during the conquest of Sensed Paddle. Well, I'm not surprised. Grumzub would design a mighty artifact that talks about the fall of one of our civilization's bastions, one of our fortresses to the Bridled Evils, those wily goblins who are causing so much trouble to our brothers down in the south. But yes, this was designed by Grumzub, and it is worth 90,000 dwarf bucks. So it's a silver bracelet. I guess that makes sense, being as he is a legendary metal crafter, he wasn't about to make a door, was he? But there is one more thing that I need to show you before we profile a dwarf, and that is... Haunter, who is now currently watching a miscellaneous object demonstration, which I don't even want to get into. <laughs> he named his weapon. He named his weapon, which was a hammer. I think it's Stezokimaz. Yes, a silver warhammer, and it means the Molten Belts. It's an exceptional silver warhammer. It has killed seven unnotable goblins. Four females and one male. Or three males. And it was all done by Haunter. So unfortunately for Haunter, were this the previous version of Dwarf Fortress, he would be nicknamed because he would have seven notable kills or five over five notable kills. However, since goblins are no longer notable, unless they are legendary, he does not, unfortunately. Alright, well, that's that. Let's profile a dwarf. Number 10. Number 10 is Azril. Wow, that's a... We're, we're sure going, going back to the early days of Anvil Quested here. Azrael's dead, so we actually can't look at Azrael, and I didn't know that. Why did I not have him crossed out? Oh well, that's fine. Number 39, still rather early. 
Number 39 is Delta. He loves to fly, and it shows. Delta is currently dumping an item. Delta is the husband of Lucia Silverax. He is the father of Akiasta. Liquidor is his older brother. Gustav is his maternal grandmother. Aw, oh, that's sweet. Granny's at the fort with you. Crackshot is his maternal grandfather. Juno and Eric Eagleson are both his aunts. Dopey and Thornton are also his aunts, as well as Zygomantis II Augustus. Mind Freezer is his uncle, as is the Zax. Then you have his niece Percival with an I, and cousins Callisto, Orthea, Instigator, Camos, Apophis, and Urst Silverheart. And that's it. Delta. Delta Spread Hall. Or Comaniton. Delta is a dwarf that is 89 years old in the unassigned cast. Within the last week, Delta felt disgust after being nauseated by the sun and bliss during dining in a legendary dining room. Within the last season, however, he felt horrified after witnessing death 109 times. Good times at Anvil quested. However, after that, he was pretty much just put off by the whole death thing and felt nothing after witnessing death an additional 11 times. And bliss because he slept in a great bedroom. Disgust because he retched on miasma. Irritation to be wearing old clothes and interest in many fine things which he has seen in our fortress. He is not particularly good at anything. In fact, he is rusty at everything. His greatest skill apparently is furnace operating. His highest mutable skill, however, is Weaver. He is generally unhindered by the thoughts of others. He forms only fleeting and rare emotional bonds with others, and he is slow to trust others. He values tradition, but is repelled by the idea of honesty. He dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. So not a lot to say about Delta, actually. Okay, let's take a look at his thoughts. Some things should never change. Delta is very conservative. And wow, he's seen and experienced many things. He is very fat. His very long sideburns are braided. His medium length mustache is neatly combed. His very long beard is arranged in double braids. His hair is clean shaven. His ears are somewhat short and his hair is chestnut with flecks of gray. His skin is copper. His eyes are also copper. He is strong, but he is susceptible to disease and very flimsy. Delta Comaniton likes quartzite, bismuth bronze, turquoise, leopard seal leather, black bullhead bone. Nice. The color amethyst, alpacas for their jutting teeth, and lemur monsters for their bloated appearance. When possible, he prefers to consume blind cave bear. Well, you know, Delta, we have one stuck up in a mushroom tree in the second cavern lair. So if you're that hungry, I guess you can go over there and try to try to eat him. Good luck with that, though. And durian wine. He absolutely detests bats. He has a very good focus and a good spatial sense, but he has an iffy memory meager creativity, a little difficulty with words, and very bad analytical abilities. So he will not be our merchant any day soon, but that is fine. We already have a great merchant in Tokshin, and we do not need any more. So it is time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, isn't it? Everything is all sealed up. We have all of our gauntlet ready to go. But first, the test. And here's where we do it. The Dwarf Fortress forum is quite clear on how to construct this masterpiece, but not clear at all on how to start it. That is, how to get the minecart on it. I am doing what I believe is the correct thing, 
which is I created a route and a stop right here on the northwest corner. And what this stop is going to be doing is it's going to be instructing a dwarf to push west immediately the minecart when empty. So all I need to do, it appears, to get this started, I hope, is assign a vehicle, which is an unused minecart. So let's go with the Cherrywood minecart. And as soon as that is complete, then I must forbid the minecart. This actually might take a moment, but I don't want to leave this screen because I'm a bit afraid that I'll miss it. And I don't want to miss it. So we're just going to sit here and we're going to watch this until whomever brings the minecart up and sets it going. In the meantime, however, I can tell you that we are doing just fine with bolts. Actually, that stopped time, didn't it? But as you can see here, we have just a humongous amount of silver bolts. And frankly, where are our steel bolts? Because we're doing a bunch of them, too. There's iron bolts here. There's some steel bolts. Why are there so many more silver bolts? And iron bolts? I thought... We have a ton of iron bolts. I thought mostly everything I've been building lately has been steel bolts. I am not sure. But one thing I have to do before all is said and done is I have to tell the two newbie squads of Mark's Dwarves to stop using wooden bolts and to transition over to steel, silver, and I guess iron, since we have so many of them, though I would prefer they all magically transformed into steel. We have 66 idlers, and I now we're up to 70 idlers. I can't tell you why. Uh-oh, Naki just became a farmer. I'm not exactly sure why he would do something like that, since he should be practicing his Mark's Dwarf abilities. No, actually... Well, let's watch. Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay, nothing happened. Or, or wait, no. No, here it comes. Here it comes. Alright, it's pushed. It's going. Oh, look at that, folks. It's actually, you know, it's not quite as full as I would like it to be, but it's obviously working. The spikes are coming in and coming out. They're just leaving kind of... I mean, they're definitely following the pattern I set. But I would have liked to see them... It was explained to me, with this setup, they are coming down and coming up almost as fast as they possibly can. So even though it looks as if they're moving quite slow, that might be just because my FPS is low. But in reality, they should, again, they should be coming up and going down as fast as they can conceivably do so without screwing up the mechanism. But it's obviously working. We can see it. We can see the different spikes coming up and down. That's wonderful. So, all right. So now the next step, and we can watch it. You know what would be fun? Actually, we're supposed to forbid the minecart, weren't we? But let's, first of all, let's, um, let's look at the minecart. And we can forbid it, sure, that's fine with me. But also, I want to follow it. Just to see the path it takes. Okay, so it goes up, hits that one, hits that one, hits that one. And you can tell when they become light purple again, that's when they are ready to be hit again, basically. And so they are just becoming light purple just in time. Well, a little bit. It could have gone a little faster, but almost just in time for our minecart to hit them. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. That is perfect. All right. So next step is to stop it. Because we have to get our miner there. So we're going to pull this lever, which what it should do is it should close a door right here, which will stop this whole process. And boom. Stopped. All right. So I guess now the next step would be to forbid or unforbid the minecart and start it all over again. Maybe we can... Frankly, I'm not sure what to do here. I guess we can just go to the stop 
And okay, so no vehicle has been assigned. So perfect. So all we have to do is reassign the minecart to it. And all should be well. But first, I think someone's got to come up here and pick up the minecart and take it away, if I'm not mistaken. I'm afraid of opening the door because then I think it would just move to the west and start all over again. Which is fine, I guess. Maybe that's what we want. I guess we could try it. Just for some experimentation purposes. See what happens when we pull the lever again. Open the door. Nope, that pretty much just stops it. So, hopefully, hopefully someone will come up here and take this minecart away, because it's just currently gathering dust. Do I have to actually assign vehicle? Yeah, it doesn't appear as it's, it's no longer assigned to it. So we should be, yeah, those are the demon bolts, but that's the stockpile. This one's called, I think, spike trap. Do I have spike trap? Nope. So we should be fine. So someone should come in here and take that minecart, hopefully. Oh, right, our military. So I was saying, the reason why I think things are a little goofy is maybe they're not ready to train everybody who's in them. So... So, Daramos' destroyers has train... So yeah, Daramos' destroyers, if you'll notice here, is set up to train... Five people, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, though. Let's give order. That's not really what I want. Edit order? Train one minimum. Order list? Ah, there we go. There we go. So it looks like it's only set up for five people, basically. And so that means out of all these guys, only five are training at any given time. So let's see if we can fix that. Edit order. Train. One soldier minimum. That should be fine. Shift. Shift enter. So now it should have... Although actually, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not actually sure how I can check. Okay, well, Dwarf Fortress just crashed, ladies and gentlemen. So I guess that will be the end of this episode. It will be a little short, but I'll figure out what's going on. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I'll fix the training of our military dwarves. I will get that minecart removed so that we can start again. And next episode will be the episode where we dig down into the depths and see what we shall see. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.